All right, hi guys. So let's start the next episode of five MCQs in five minutes, through which you are actually revising five ultra important topics. This session or this series that we have started is important for NEET, PG, INICD, and FMG, all the aspirants. The very first question that we are having today is about a female who is on anticoagulant therapy of warfarin, became pregnant. Which of the following advice will you give with respect to warfarin? Now, don't you think this question has already been asked? A similar kind of question has already been asked in NEET PG, also in AIMS and INICD. This is one of the FMGE June 2021. So you see, topics are almost same in almost all these examination. With respect to anticoagulant use, she was already on warfarin. What will you advise? Advice for medical termination of pregnancy, continue warfarin and add vitamin K, continue warfarin without any concern, change warfarin to heparin. Now, she was taking warfarin and she conceived. In this case, you know, as soon as you are aware about this one, uh, you know, uh, you are supposed to switch or I would say change warfarin to heparin. And I always say according to American College of Cardiology or American Heart Association guideline uh, from week 1 to 12 week, we are supposed to use unfractionated heparin or simply low molecular weight heparin. However, from 13th to 35th week, we will be utilizing warfarin. And from 36th week onward, you are supposed to switch back again to heparin. Heparin may either of them you can utilize unfractionated heparin, but we always prefer low molecular weight heparin. Huh? You do not advise for medical termination of pregnancy. You can keep monitoring, uh, but we are supposed to change uh, uh, no, warfarin to heparin because warfarin is associated. Warfarin that we know, warfarin is actually associated with uh, warfarin as a drug. It's associated with your contrady syndrome, also given the name as a fetal warfarin syndrome, where there is a nasal and septal and bony defect. Question number two, which of the following agent is used in bronchial asthma does not have bronchodilatation effect. Again, June 2021 examination, theophylline, it's one of the, theophylline, it's one of the phosphodiesterase inhibitor. It's one of the phosphodiesterase inhibitor. They definitely will be having bronchodilating property. Salbutamol is one of the beta-2 agonists. They will also be having directly acting bronchodilating agent. Hydrocortisone is one of the steroids. Do remember, steroids have no direct bronchodilating property. Inka koi bhi bronchodilatation property nahi hai. Steroids, they can actually increase the beta 2 receptor ka sensitivity. That is one indirect action that can be seen. It has been seen. It has been seen that uh, steroids, they increase the beta 2 receptor sensitivity, but they do not have any direct bronchodilating property. Ipratropium, it's one of the M3 antagonists. They also are associated with the passive or indirect bronchodilatation. Do remember, all of them will be causing bronchodilatation here, but not your uh, hydrocortisone. One more question that I can squeeze down here. Ipratropium is considered as the preferred bronchodilator in patients those who are on beta blocker that is another important mcu that you can expect you know preferred bronchodilator so they will give you a history of a person who is on antihypertensive drug let's say who is on uh, he is on beta blocker and now you need a bronchodilator which of the following drug can be utilized so either ipratropium or triatropium what i'm trying to explain here is m3 antagonist is something that you can utilize you know? Next one, which of the following is the action of dopamine at low doses? Dopamine always act, guys, on the receptor. And I ask you to remember by the mnemonic DABBA, DABBA is D1, less than 2 microgram per kg per minute, which will be causing vasodilatation. Dopamine D1 causes vasodilatation. B1 at a dose of 2 to 10 will be causing beta 1 uh, stimulation, and that can increase the heart rate or it can increase the force of contraction. So whenever there is acute heart failure and you need a dose, this is the dose that you can utilize. And alpha 1 in any dose more than 10 microgram per kg per minute. So that can cause vasoconstriction, can increase the blood pressure. Dopamine at low doses, they will only cause vasodilatation. So their dopamine is mainly present on the renal and mesenteric vasculature. So they increase the renal blood flow, mesenteric blood flow. Inotropic effect will be seen on the dose 2, you know, 2 to 10 volume. Vasoconstricting effect uh, or chronotropic, uh, inotropic chronotropic will be seen on this dose and vasoconstricting effect will be seen on this dose. Okay. Next question. A female patient with uh, pain and redness on the grade 2. Again, this all-time favorite question is examiner ka pain and uh, redness on the grade 2. And they are mainly going to talk about a case of gout. Apart from analgesic, drug was added which reduces the uric acid formation. Which of the following enzyme is inhibited by this? So uric acid formation will be mainly targeted by inhibiting xanthine oxidase, right? And what is the xanthine oxidase inhibitor? The name of the drugs under this one is going to be none other than your allopurinol, right? Allopurinol. Another one is the febuxostat. Allopurinol and febuxostat. 
recombinant uricase that we know is known as your ras uricase recombinant uricase is your ras uricase and other one is your p glottis remember they are utilized in a chronic gout they can be utilized in a patient with the chronic gout and not only that they can also be utilized in a patient with the tumor lysis syndrome we can also utilize them in patient with the tumor lysis syndrome because of their very fast action because their fast action we can utilize them they are the recombinant uric acid ras uric acid and p glottic acid they cause metabolism of the uric acid to water soluble metabolite that is allantoin among the given choices d is the correct answer xanthine oxidase inhibitor will be allopurinol febuxostat okay विटामिन दैट इंक्रीज द एब्जॉर्शन ऑफ आयरन यार इस ये तो डायरेक्ट और बहुत ही सिंपल क्वेश्चन है दैट इज अगेन एसिडिक पी एच में आयरन एब्जॉर्शन इंक्रीजेस एंड द ओनली विटामिन दैट वी दैट इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज विटामिन सी एंड एंड आई ऑलवेज आस पर्सनली टू माई पेशेंट दैट ट्राई टू टेक योर आयरन विद लेमन वाटर समटाइम दे आस शुड आई टेक इट विद फ्रेश वाटर और शुड आई टेक इट विद यू नो मिल्क आई सिंपली से do not take it with the milk or fresh water take it with the lemon water that's much better option no because vitamin c uh, will uh, improvise the absorption uh, the problem with the iron if it is taken with the milk uh, again milk has calcium that will chill it and they will interfere with the absorption right so this was uh, five uh, very quickly five important question five important topics that we have covered here in our uh, today session i hope that you have enjoyed please do not forget to like share and subscribe i'll see you in the next session thank you very much